G'day guys, welcome back. Fits a tailplane in this movie. Tailplane stays or struts on the bottom and uh, going well. Thanks for watching. Alright, stage one, fit the tailplane to the fuselage. I've just made up my centre line. A bit of wood with a nail in it, it's on centre. And I got some had bricky string but it stretches too much where this this like paracord doesn't stretch. Um, I've got these tangs I should have noticed before. They're for like the turtle deck. But unfortunately, you can actually see here, like there's the front mount for the tailplane. So these go straight through the tailplane. So they, they should be the tailplane finishes out here somewhere, so you know one of us is wrong. Pretty sure those tangs are wrong. I got a bit of a fright when I put the tailplane on. They actually, you know, poke up, poke up through here somewhere where they should be at the leading edge of the, the tailplane. But we'll move on. I'm just uh, one of those jobs procrastinating a lot, but it's just you know, get it on centre, get those two distances right, and drill it, and then set the incidence. So we'll see how we go. All right, so I drilled the holes, very nervous doing that. You gotta be a bit careful because, I don't know if you can sort of see here, this one looks closer to this than that one, like the hole. But when you measure, I measure from the tail post, that's 40. And this hole is 40. You know, 640. And then if you measure the, the cross brace here, that's 60. And this way it's 70. So that's telling me that this manufacturer's cross brace is not square to the datum line. So it sort of throws you off a bit. And I mentioned these tags don't need to be there. Move on. Tail plane mounted. Got the bolts through. On the standoff at the back, um, yeah, castellated nuts for now. I just went with a smaller spacer at the front there. So a quarter inch at the front, one inch at the back. Gives me, believe it or not, it's still at, um, I think it's two and a half degrees positive on the tailplane, as opposed to five. I just put the one inch there. Also, you'll notice the, um, the rudder, or the fin, actually fits. If you have it on the one inch, the fin sort of disappears what would be inside the covering. Going well. Just a quick one on my fuselage. Um, it's basically been rejected because of the welds. So that's from my Lamy L4 inspector if you like couple of options, I can ignore him and just keep going because um, I'm flying under RAOs, you can fly a, fly a broom handle if you like but I think I've got to do the right thing, if I was in America he'd probably send it back to be honest um, so let's just say my inspector, who's a well known person here um, has knocked it back because of the weld, he's not happy with the welds so I'm going to knock the primer off, take it down there. He can fix the welds up for me. Um, it'll look like chook poo on top of chook poo. But we'll get it serviceable. And then I'll probably epoxy prime the fuselage. And we'll go from there. So a bit of a setback. But it's got to be right. Control horn gussets. So I've got my control horns in. I just made up these blocks. It's a simple block bolted to the top with the right, um, when you get the angle right. Um, put it on there, holds the horn square to the job. Made up the, there's no, no information on this, so you're on your own a bit. Did my gusset at the back, looks pretty strong. And now I'm just making these gussets up. I'm not sure if I show you guys this sort of, this sort of detail, some people, it's pretty ho-hum, but, Three equally spaced holes. I start with 
one sixteenth, which is a silver Clicos. Then I'd upsize to the one eighth, and it'll end up final hole size is one eighth in this application. Um, you see, there's like a three sixteenth rivet there. Um, just gives you a bit of time just to work things around. But from here, basically, you finish the job, drill it all, Clico it all, then pull it apart. I use Metho to get everything off, all the texture marks, polish up the edges, deburr, put it back on, um, nothing should have moved. But then you put in you know, as many Clicos as you want and rivet as you go. You, potentially you could rivet that with just two Clicos. On a small job like this, if there's five holes there, six holes, I, um, if there's five holes, I'd use four Clicos and just take your time, do one at a time. These extra long drill bits, that's probably a six inch drill bit. Just allows you to get in over the top of all the Clicos as well. If you're trying to do it with a normal drill bit. And also, um, in, like in this situation, you've got the control horn there. The drill would hit the control horn. Now because you've had um, Clicos in all these holes, you know you haven't, haven't not drilled a hole. So a quick deburr. I've already polished the edges up. This is how I cut my fingers all the time. But you'll find a burr. Metho on a rag. And then those texture marks just come off. Clean the job up. Clean off my marks up here. I can feel that I need to deburr these holes in the structure. Basically do, do one lap with this because it's got three or four teeth on it so you're getting three or four bites just in one lap. You can go over the top with this thing and countersink the hole. Then I like to, um, a bit pedantic, I use a brush. Just get the, Sorry about the rattling. Get the swarf out of the job. Now that's a finished finished part. All good. All the holes are on centre, almost. And that'll go back in there. And click over. And you've basically made a kit up. See that click goes up. Really nice, tight and right. Like I said, I'll put uh, five holes, three clicos, can't move, and we'll rivet those and then pull the clicos out, keep going. Then I, like I did on the top, with this edge here, just tap that round with a ball peen hammer um, and then. It should be nice for the covering later on. I still need to work out with the covering that comes here. I reckon I need some sort of... I know I need some sort of landing there for the covering. Probably go on a, on a bit about that. That can just be any old bit of jam tin. Um, across there might be the go. Got a visitor. Hey buddy. This rivet here, because we go from one inch tube down to three quarter tube, you want to sort of, I've already kink, put a kink in my gusset, but you want it to sort of hold centre, which it will because I've got three quarter hole in this, so it holds its centre, but you want this to crush down nice and tight. So I use a good old five pound sledge, just because it's the right height. Under there gives you something to push on. Rivet goes in. I know it's not seated, but that's a good thing. It's nice and tight. Make sure it's seated with the gun. Push everything down. Boom.
for now. Finish that off when we cover it. Just drilling out these very the stainless steel or chrome molly tangs, drilling them out to 3/16. Um, I was a bit concerned at first, but put a pilot hole in, 16th pilot hole, slow speed, high pressure as they go. Once again, jiggity jig. This guy goes in there and then drill it out and the jig. Slow speed, high pressure. And just have the I've got the wood against the the drill so it doesn't spin. Two three sixteenth holes. Clean up the holes. All good. Also spent, I think I showed you, spent 80 bucks, brand new drill bits. Um, just makes life happy. New drill bits. Right now we're just annealing these are the struts. You go under the tail plane. So a little trick there, I'm not sure if I mentioned it. Put the texture marks on there or black Nico marker and um, heat, it, heat it up with my blowtorch. That anneals the alloy and you can bend it. I made up a little I made up a little jig as I do, just so when it's hot, it gave me the angle of the bend. Now I've fitted it with a hole. Obviously, I'll round this off and polish it all up later. Now I've got to, it's going to flatten this end out. Can't film that because it gets a little bit hot in the kitchen here, guys. But I'll um, crush this down in the vise. It'll give me a nice sort of duck bill at the end to go through. Just wanted to say thanks to, um, let's just say, one of my viewers. Paid him a visit yesterday, you know who you are, thank you very much. And I've got some beautiful, full, well not full size, but replica plans. There's five or six pages there, double sided. Um, it's got all the details of basically to build a full, full size of replica Sopwith Camel. Come in very handy, thank you very much. And then there's the end flattened out nicely. We'll round that off and drill our hole. It's surprising how quick this actually um, cools down. I think it's something like 600 degrees when the text, see the texture marks sort of disappeared or changed colour. Uh, makes it easy to work. Now I'm just hoping that I got the ends square to each other. So here we go. On the aircraft, we'll go on the And goes on the bolt and the flat when that's sitting nice and flat and down here boom nailed that one and just tidy it up and uh, we'll put a bolt through for now put the bolt through this way in future the covering may prevent the bolt going in so it may have to be upside down I'd knock out four of those. I'm not going to lie, I had to make five struts. I did cut one a bit short. But there we go, that's nice, nice job. All right, so it was close, but it could be better. So, what did I do? Put the end in the vise, and you just grab the other end I found the shifter, got some nice leverage, and you can just twist it slightly just to get everything nice. And now it's lined up nicely. And just to round the ends off, I just use the old paddle pop stick as a radius or the big tongue depressor. Um, make a radius and we'll round those off. So like that with the tongue depressor, 
just make a radius, it doesn't really matter. We'll make it nice and neat. And we'll hit it on the sander. Rounded it off, just so it looks aesthetically pleasing. Then onto the buffer. Buffed up, nice, good to go. On the other end, nicely spoon build. The sulfur crested spoon bill, as opposed to the South African, well, South African bamfaffy. So, this will go on to our bolt. And what I've been playing with, let's clamp that. Clamp that end, nice and flush or flat. And then you want flat on flat. So I mucked around a bit to get that nice and flat on flat. We'll drill a hole. The other item of business, clearly mark each one. They'll stay marked, stay marked now until final uh, final assembly almost. So right, right front, right rear, left rear. Now sometimes you've got to be your own worst critic. This end, this one's pretty good. So it's nice and flat. I've just had to twist that a little bit more than I wanted to. But, I don't know, I think it's okay. But you know what? See there? Just looks a bit, can I do better? Of course I can. Let's make another one. Right, we'll knock up another one. This is why I keep, keep all my jigs all made up over there. So you can make another piece. So this will be number number six. I only needed four. I'm just not happy with that um, sort of with the barber's pole. But this one, if I mark up the next one, we may still use this one. Let's see how we go. Oh, heat treated. Stuck it in the vise. And just use the other one as a as a guide for that first bend. Done. Right, so I'm going to use that one. It's in the vise, so I'll match the heads up up there as I put them in. Um, it should get a lot closer. So here we go. All right, so it's take two. What I'm after, I want that to sit nice and flat, which it is there, so we can clamp that. Clamped, that's two dollars I ever spent. Comes down, it's cooled down. And what I like to see is that it sits flat, flat on flat, effortless. Just need to trim the length of touch. There we go, that was worth probably an extra 10 minutes. Just to cut another one. Happy now, happy days. If in doubt, chuck it out. Big fan of avoiding confusion, so I put tape on this one, this was the first go. I'm going to zip the ends off to completely alleviate any confusion and throw that in my spares bin. Happy with that one, you can see how it hasn't got that barber's pole sort of twist in it. It's just a flat, nice, clean the texture off, we're good to go. Now the reason I, and I can feel myself rushing it's um, Easter, Good Friday tomorrow. Short day of school today. Kids knock off early. I've got to get get home, get to school pick up. So I'm going to knock off there. This fits nicely. Now I'm sure when I come back, I'll probably tweak these a bit more. Um, it's funny because when I, when you first come in, you think, oh yeah, four, four tubes, four holes, whack the bolts in, and then I thought I'd get the wires on. Um, that's okay. 
do it, do it slowly and correctly. Um, I think I've made this one, that's the third one I've made. But it's right now. Next step, I'm gonna run a straight edge. I'm gonna pull the, this just pops off. I'll just lift off. Um, pull the rudder and fin off. I'm gonna run a straight edge just along my rear spar, just because gravity's kicking in a bit now. Um, just take any droop out of it, prop it up. Run a 16th drill bit through these once they're clamped, upsize to 3 16th, whack a bolt in, that'll be our struts done. Then I'll run uh, straight edge or bricky string just to get these tangs pointing at each other. Resist the temptation to bend them on the on the structure because this is steel, that's alloy, I know what will bend first. Then we'll run our turnbuckles in our cables. Elevator can go back on. Um, and they'll have to work. That's right, I'll have to do the cross the cross member in here, which grabs this bracket and will lock lock everything in together. That's where we're at. Let's do it. I'm gonna pull the pin early today, guys. I always like to leave on a high. So I redid that strut. Um, worked out really nice, drilled the holes. I don't want to rush ahead and drill the other four holes. Um, I can feel myself rushing, like I said. Don't want to make a mistake, because then you go home annoyed. It's going to be a few, probably next week before I get back out here, um, end of next week. So pack up, have a think about it. I'm probably going to do some chores at home. We might leave it there, guys. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next video. I'll get this one out before Easter, so happy Easter to everyone. And uh, having a bit of a break over school holidays, but we'll get back into it shortly. Thanks for watching.